You're listening to Popcorn and Politics. What's the real deal? Hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney and Derek J. Wilson. Asking the hard-hitting questions you want answers to. From political leaders and political hopefuls from around the world. Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to another episode of Popcorn and Popcorn. I'm your pop, popcorn, popcorn, and pop, popcorn, popcorn and popcorn. That's a new show. Listen, y'all know me. I'm new show, popcorn and popcorn. No, I'm just kidding. Welcome to another episode of Popcorn and Politics. I'm your host, Audrey Bell Kearney, along with my co-host, Derek J. Wilson. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? I ain't talked to you in about a week. I know it feels like that, right? I feel like, I feel like this show was like, I feel, I, and I said to myself, did we miss an episode? Like nah, I just wasn't here last week. Yeah, the, uh, maybe that's what it was. The judge okay. on, or the guy running for judge, uh, Andre. Yeah, Andre yeah, yeah. Johnson. So Andre was on. Like, listen, we got a lot. We got a lot going on. We're getting very close to the primary, which is what May second. May twenty fourth. May twenty fourth. Okay, I'm way off. Yes. May twenty fourth. Primaries are coming up, so we got everybody. early vote. Early vote starts May second, I believe. Okay. I knew I was in there somewhere. So there it is. There it is. But listen, we got a great guest for you today. He is. So I had to ask him. I was like, you know, I looked at your bio. You have done an absolute lot. How old are you? And he started laughing. He said, I get that a lot. Because when I when I saw the bio, it was just a lot. I'm like, wow, well, how old is he? So he gets that a lot. But we're going to we're going to bring our guest on shortly. And that's Commissioner Demond Mason. But before we get on to that, uh, I just got to I just got to say this. So. Ooh, there was a Trump rally earlier this week. I, you know, I'm convinced, Derek. I'm convinced that some of them people are a little crazy. So now okay. they are chanting, lock him up, lock him up. So they're talking about Kemp, just in case y'all want to know who him is. Him is Kemp. And they're saying lock him up because Trump said, you know, because of him, he lost the election. Not because people didn't like him, you know, because of, because of Kemp. You know, not because people voted for him, but because of Kemp. He lost the election. Now, despite all of the, the the investigations that have gone on into that election that came back that there is no fraud, they are still saying that there was fraud and it was all Kemp's fault. So I thought that was pretty interesting that they was like, Shannon, lock him up, lock him. And I'm like, wow. So that's so. And what was crazy, Derek, they said before the election, Kemp and Purdue was allies. Now, now, now Purdue is throwing up the thumbs like, lock him up, get him out, get him going. So. Well, you know, in politics, uh, uh, I don't know the saying, but, you know, one moment they're your friends, the next moment they're your enemies, you know, and then, and then, and then you look up y'all friends again, look at Ted Cruz. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, that man talking about his, 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 his wife, his daddy, and now he, he, you know, he's a number one Trump supporter. So that's, uh, that, that goes to show you also at that same rally, if I'm not mistaken, your your favorite guy that you love to talk about, uh, what's his name? Uh, Herschel Hank? Walker. Hers- Herschel Walker. Yeah, <laughs> he, you know, he don't want us to have CTR here in the state of state of Georgia. Why not? CTR. I know what it is, but why he don't want us? No, to no, have no, 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 no. You're missing it. It's he said CTR. Oh God. Yeah, it's I missed not, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we don't have CTR, by the way. And they need to let them know that we do, we're not fighting for CTR. That's not what we're fighting for, folks. We're not fighting for CTR. So we totally agree with Herschel with the CTR. Yeah, we yeah C- CTR. We don't want that here in Georgia. To be honest, we're not. I mean, CRT is not being taught in schools either. So just for the record, that's not being taught. But uh, he's so uh, he's so politically correct that he got the. He got it wrong, C- CTR, and everybody just cheering around. But uh, you know that's enough of that. Uh, speaking of other news in in in, in Georgia, <laughs> uh, there was several bills passed this week. Uh, effectively, uh, the governor, if he hasn't signed, he will sign the bill that will make it a uh, constitutional carry. You know, anybody I get, can get a gun. No permit is required. I I, I believe they. Uh, We'll do a background check. I don't know the details of that, but I do know that they're they're putting more guns out uh, in the community. So uh, that 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 was a bill that was passed on the low side. On the high side, uh, Georgia passed a bill that will see mental illness as a physical illness. So you know you 
you have a heart attack is just important as you having a uh, mental breakdown as far as health insurance and the state code. So uh, it's one step of getting Georgia, which is one of the worst states in the country when it comes down to mental health. Uh, it's getting them a step closer to becoming a better state when it comes down to dealing with people with mental health. So uh, those are the highs and lows of some of the bills that, that made it through session this week. Well, okay, so we are one of the worst states when it comes to mental health, but you just passed a, a bill that says you don't need a permission to get a gun. You just go get your, you know, if you could pass the background check. And, so if your mama go and pass the background check and get a gun, you can carry that gun because you don't need a license. Right, so anybody nah, no can license. You don't need a no license. license you don't need a permission. You just, just go get the gun. So mama going to get you the gun. Now, let me just say this real quick. And, and this is what happened. I'm standing in the gun line, not last year, year before my, my husband and I, we standing in the gun line, buying our gun like everybody else, because everybody was buying a gun back then, because everybody was afraid. So a lady, she was standing in front of me. She like, she's about 70 years old. Somebody buying a gun for me and my daughter. I said, well, how old is your daughter? She's 18, 18 years old. And I said, oh, okay, right? So little, little Susie didn't have to go and buy the gun. Mama bought the gun for her. Now little Susie don't even need a license to carry the gun. Because mama gonna give it a gun, so she didn't have to do a background check. So whether or not they're allowed to do, a, they do a background check or not, it's pretty much irrelevant if mama can buy the gun and pass the background check. Because now Susie don't need she, you know what I'm saying? Like that's, but you, yeah. but they, okay. I don't so the argument is supposed to be because you know, in particular in Metro Atlanta, you know, gun violence has been on the rise. And so I guess the argument is, you know, give them more guns, give more guns to the good people, to the good people so they can combat the bad people. I, I mean, I think it's crazy, but it's nuts. Uh, that was one of those bills to, uh, you know, for Kemp to his base, you know, to help rally his base. You know, uh, I don't think it'll work, but Kemp is basically out here buying, buying votes for this governor's race. Uh, you know, I mean, he's fighting on two fronts. He got he got Purdue on one front, and then he got Stacey Abrams coming over on the other side. And so, um, but I think Stacey got got it pretty pretty made. All she got to do is let them tear each other up, and then you know, she yeah. she just come on in, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, you know, yeah. and and brush the dust off the porch and keep it moving. <laughs> you know what's crazy about that? Um... Somebody said Bunny Gwinnett died in a, in a in a duel. I did not know that because he loved his gun too. Here's the thing about the whole gun thing. I'm a, we're gonna get out there and bring our guests in. One of the things about that is that yeah, he may be catering to his base, but he's making it equal for everybody to carry a gun. Everybody. Some of everybody should have a gun. I'm gonna say that some folks just shouldn't yeah. have a gun. So because they're dangerous. They're dangerous just walking down the street looking at you. So you're going to put a gun in their hands. I'm just saying, you know, well, I you know, we done had people get shot over bowling ball uh, just recently here in Gwinnett recently. County. Yeah. I mean, just That's recently, recently. Some, uh, somebody in Gwinnett County got shot over basketball. A young lady that got killed a couple of weeks ago at the bowling alley. She was leaving the bowling right. alley and, and boy, she said something to, about a ball and he, he killed her. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. All right, let's get listen. Listen. On a brighter note, we got Commissioner <laughs> Demond Mason you. here uh, out of Newton County. Uh, I want to uh, make sure that we make the correction because I know the post on Instagram said Covington County, which doesn't exist, but uh, is Newton County and Covington. I want to say is the seat holder for Newton County, if I'm not mistaken. He'll correct me if I'm wrong, but. Uh, you know, a great guy, District 2 commissioner. He's running for uh, re-election, and uh, he's a native of Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, I met him on the side of the street picking up some trash. Uh, and, you know, I, I say that because your elected official was on the side of the street picking up trash. I'm like, hey, man, you need some help? No, nah, but uh, good guy. He's very, uh, very humble down to earth. And uh, I'm so excited that I met him. And like I said, I met him literally uh, at a cleanup event. And you don't see too many of, uh, of, of us and too many of elected officials doing what he does. So uh, uh, I'm looking forward to speaking with him. 
So without further ado, we would like to welcome Commissioner DeMond Mason to the show. Welcome. Welcome. Hey. Hey everybody. Thank you. Yeah, but we gotta get a we gotta get a clap background or something. Like, Woo! Right. So we are- <laughs> I'll do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for being here. Um, you know, I was I was just talking about you earlier because I I was reading your bio and I was like, well, how old is he? And he, he was I'm not I'm not gonna share his age, but I'm just saying, you know, I was I was like, wow, he's done a lot in a short amount of time because I'm thinking he's like 27 years old. I was a little bit wrong, but he has done some amazing things in his community. Um, and so we want to, and you you are an elected official right now, running for re-election. So um, why do you want to do that? Because because I know you have a one-year-old <laughs> and, and, a, and a family. Why why are you running again? Like, why do, why do you want to run again? Because I feel like um, I talk, we talked to a lot of politicians on here and balance is one of the things that they have to do. So why, why again? Well, that's a bigger question. And before I answer your question, I want to thank uh, Ms. Audrey, thank Derek for inviting me to popcorn and politics. Uh, I think this is an amazing, amazing platform. Uh, and some of the things that you talk about, uh, the subject matters, are what our community and people need to hear and need to discuss. And so I'm just honored that you thought of me uh, and decided to bring me on to have this conversation and discussion. So I want to say thank you. Uh, to answer your question, uh, it started back uh, when I first bought my home in Newton County, Georgia, back in 2014. Uh, when I bought my home, I told my real estate broker, well, now that I'm a homeowner, I want to be actively involved in the community. I don't, just don't want to be a homeowner and do nothing. So he suggested that I attend the local political party uh, meetings. And so I started going, uh, started networking, you know, meeting with people, you know, this wasn't my first leadership role. I've always been in leadership roles for a long time, but I would say the majority of my adult life. Uh, but this was new coming into the political arena. I had always kind of had a desire to be engaged and be involved. Uh, but this was my first opportunity. So started networking, meeting people. They put me on a standing committee to be able to make decisions for my district and the party. But then they um, asked me to be the parliamentarian for the executive committee. Uh, fast forward to 2018, the week of qualifying, the day before the last day. So the last day was on a Friday. I got a call on a Thursday saying, hey, did you hear that our previous commissioner is retiring? And I said, no. Well, he is. He just announced it. And we want you to be our next uh, county commissioner. And I said, who, me? And they said, yes, you. I said, but I don't know anything about, you know, the political arena. I'm still just learning. They said, don't worry about that. You have a heart and a passion for the people. You'll learn how to be a county commissioner later because there's training. And I said, but I have to have all of my qualifying fees by tomorrow at 12 noon. I said, don't worry about that either. We got that covered. Just be there tomorrow by 12 noon. Your fees are covered. Everything is covered. We just want you to run. And I said, okay. So I talked to my treasurer and she thought it was a great idea. She said, go home and talk to your wife and pray about it. And I would love for you to come back tomorrow and, you know, run. So came home, talked to my wife. She said, if this is what you want to do, I support you. And then when I prayed about it, I said, God, I don't know anything about politics. All I know is kingdom. All I know is ministry. All I know is the church. He said, I'm taking you to the next level of ministry where you will be able to influence individuals that you wouldn't have been able to influence as an average citizen. I said, God, so you mean to tell me this is still ministry? He said, yes, this is still ministry. So with that being said, this is an assignment. Uh, this is not just something that I aspire to do uh, or that I just created myself. It is a God assignment. So that's why I'm running again for re-election because my assignment is not over yet. My right. assignment, that sounds like a book. My assignment is. is not, it sounds like when my assignment, you know, I have that right. gift of, of hearing these things. 
Yeah, right there, down. That's oh, my gift. Oh, a sermon topic. He about to preach. I was about to say, man. I, I know my assignment is not <laughs> over yet. Yes, ordained pastor as well, so you know, it's just in me. Yeah. Wow. You know, you know one of the things I um I want to say is that um I looked at when I was looking at your um profile. One of the things that that always stands out for me when is economic development. Um, 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 economic economic development. Um, 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 economic development.
into the community, not just pay their property taxes, but are they willing to come in and you know provide additional monies to take on some of the parks and recreation projects that we have? You know, take on some of the infrastructure that we are looking to develop within our community. So finding ways for these businesses that when they want to come to our community, how can they be not just a resident, but to be a partner as well and really helping develop and taking our community to the next level? I love what you said about culture. A lot of times as a small business owner, one of the things we look at is to make sure that the people that work with us fit into our culture because you don't want, you know, Debbie Downer on your team if that's not the culture of your company, right? right. So I thought that was pretty interesting. You say like what, you know, we would need to make sure they fit with our culture. Talk a little about what that culture is for us. Well, what I can tell you is that Newton County residents, we have an awesome, awesome community. Um, uh, actually in my district, uh, we have a, because we're on the Western side of the county. So we're a lot closer to Atlanta uh, than the rest of the county. So we're about 45 minutes east. Uh, uh, so we're right here. We where my district actually borders Henry County. My district borders Rockdale County uh, and very, very close to DeKalb County, uh, which is where my district is. So what I have seen is that we have a variety of individuals that have high medium incomes, uh, that have uh, high, medium education levels. Uh, and so we have a, a great mix of individuals, some that haven't quite uh, achieved their uh, level of income that they desire, or their level of education level as of yet. Uh, and then we have some that have. So we kind of have, uh, I would say, a, a great spectrum, you know, from the uh, individuals that haven't quite made it, and then those who have, and those that are in the middle that are really on their way striving to become what they desire. So we have a a, a great mix of individuals. Uh, we are a very loving community, a caring community. You know, you're going to always have those naysayers in every single community. You're going to have those that are um, not so positive, uh mm -hmm. at all times uh you're gonna always have those that uh they want to be controlling and they want you to do what they want and only what they want so you're gonna have those individuals but i think for the most part uh the majority of our community are very positive minded uh very goal oriented goal driven type of individuals and so we have an awesome awesome community we love each other we're neighborly uh, we do our best to try to work with each other uh, and try to bring positive light and positive things to our community. Well, mm -hmm. I, I I love that you say that because uh, just by me following you these past, I don't even think it's been a whole year, has it? I, don't even think, it's been I think probably it has. Yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been so been long. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, I see that you are not a uh, commissioner that sits behind a desk. And, uh, and, and you know, bark orders. You're, you're you're out there in your community. Um, and so, how did how did the pandemic make you shift or 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 change your your governing your governing style? Uh, did it make you more accessible, or did you you know did it did it pull you back? Like, how did that? Uh, because I I can I can list the things that I saw that you done, but I would rather let you let you say what what you guys had to do in order to uh, you know assist during the pandemic. Well, yes, it did shift, and of course I was fairly new when the pandemic hit. You know, I had just came in January two thousand and nineteen, so I took that first year to really learn how to be a great asset as a commissioner. So I was in a training class somewhere in the state of Georgia, like every single month. My wife would always say, you're gone again? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> because I really wanted to be a great commissioner. I didn't want to take this role lightly. And so I took that first year of really training. Well, then in 2020, I was like, okay, I've got my training out of the way. I'm now a certified county commissioner. Uh, I've completed 66 plus hours uh, of training. 
I'm ready to get back out into the community. And then bam, COVID-19 hit. And so I said, okay, what do I do? Well, the first thing that I did was I created a series of online conversations. Uh, I created uh, the legal series. I created uh, community conversations uh, and I created economic exchanges, talking about economic development. And so what I would do is I would bring on guests from all around the county, inside and outside, that I had begun to network with, connect with, uh, and to really share those things uh, with our community uh, from a live online perspective. Uh, and it was, you know, a Q&A session where uh, those that logged in and watched, they were able to ask questions. And I would allow my guests to answer those questions right there on the spot. And then, of course, allow them to leave their contact details. So if they wanted to follow up with them for more questions. So that's kind of what I really got into. And then I created uh, my Homeowners Association uh, Alliance. Uh, so what I started doing is every single month, meeting with my homeowners association boards all across district two uh and i would bring in guests to really empower them so that they can empower their individual subdivisions as well as created a network for them so if one hoa had an issue and another hoa had previously dealt with that before now they can have a network and conversation and say well hey how did you deal with this well these are the steps that we took to overcome that issue. So I created a networking base for all of my homeowners association subdivisions all across uh, my district, as well as the online platforms that I utilize to inform uh, the Newton County residents. So that's what I really engaged in during the pandemic. It's so funny. I'm sitting here trying to remain professional, right? But Derek, you probably know I want to jump out of my skin right now. Like, what? Because we do popcorn and politics and my company, Noise Media Network, that's the whole focus of what we do, streaming media and all that stuff. But it's to sit here and hear you say, I took the initiative to set up these series, not one. You said, did you do like three of them, three different, like three, one, yeah, three, three different Three different series, right? Yes. And people, I don't have time to do a podcast. I don't have time to do a video. You didn't do one, you did three. Because right. I, you understand the power of these platforms. And I try to tell people that, you know, these are media platforms. Listen, if we have not learned anything else about the past administration, the big administration, is that we are in media all the time. So I kudos to you for leveraging these platforms to reach our Thank community. You. We've been in so many meetings where people say, well, we're getting the word out. Well, you're not doing a great job because people still don't know about the things that you're right. saying in front of us right now. Right. You're not doing a great job. You might want to do this. Ah, oh, no, nah, we don't need to do all that. Yeah, you do. So I want to just give you your kudos and your flowers right now for leveraging these platforms to make sure that you stay committed and, and connect to your community. I also want to tell you, man, we're going to steal that uh, economic exchange idea. I'm just telling yeah, you that. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to steal I, that I like now. That. So I'm economic no exchange. Coming. I was I already that. taking note on that one. Matter of fact, I'm going to call you when you get off. So, so listen, we're going to borrow that. We're going to give you all the credit. Listen, this all came from Commissioner DeMond Mason. We borrowed this from him. Of, but I just, I love Go right it. ahead. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Take As, anything that I do, feel free to yeah. take it and I, run with it. I, I said I was going to reach so out cool. to you because I don't know if Audrey, I mean, you know my position, but Audrey is also uh, uh, a board member of the, of the chamber as well. Wow. So, you know, okay. and so, so I was, I was sitting there thinking like, yeah, so well, we're going to have a meeting after, you know, <laughs> later on, because we got to figure out some of these ideas that he got going on. But also, uh, you know, due to his humility, he didn't, he, you know, he didn't continue to go over his, his list of things that he put together uh, during the pandemic. And correct me if I'm wrong, during the pandemic, you put together uh, a group of local churches, you know, yes. to, you know, a group of local churches. And, and so explain what was that? Like, what, what, the, you know, what's that for? The objective was, was to really get our pastors um, heavily involved in the community and you look to be able to utilize them as a community resource. Uh, and so I created the Pastoral Community Alliance. Uh, yeah. And so I'm in the process of starting to meet with them uh, 
either once a month or once a quarter because they're very, very busy. And then, of course, being an ordained pastor myself, I see, you know, for years, people would always say that church and state should be separate. But I really disagree with that. Now being in this role, now understanding that as a ordained pastor, uh, now my assignment moving into the government realm, uh, they work hand in hand. They are in partnership with each other. And so we do have some churches in District 2 that are heavily involved uh, within the community. They do toy giveaways. They get food giveaways. You know, they give away clothes, coats. They are actively involved. As a matter of fact, one of my churches has a, we call it a food pantry. But when you go there, it's almost like Walmart. Mm. I mean, when I tell you they have everything from clothes, shoes, uh, medicine, uh, arts and crafts, uh, lawnmowers, microwaves, Oh, wow. And they are actually giving these things out to the community for free. Wow. And so I wanted to ensure that I was able to capitalize on those churches and highlight them on what they are doing in the community. So not only bring them in as a partner so that we can do more things together, but highlight them and let people know, because some people, I don't think they know what they're doing in the community. And so that's how the Pastoral Community Alliance actually formed by really wanting to bring our churches and be able to highlight them. All right. And then you put together the Young Leadership Alliance. Is that you as well? Like, I mean, Audrey, I I mean, I don't want to go through the list, but like this, I mean, this guy has so many different, I mean, you know, that's why I asked him, how old are you? Because I read the list, how old are you? (laughs) And so, you know, as, as, as Audrey know, you know, um, the, uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had our uh, chamber gala, and uh, in my and I wanted uh, to be there. I'm so uh, sorry. Uh, I, I totally next understand. Year, this, yeah, next, next year. year. Come on, next year. Next year. You, know, you know, we ain't gonna hold it right. against you. Just gotta show up next year. Okay, um, I got you. But one of the, the 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 key points of my address was, you know, collaboration, building collaborative, yes. you know, collaborative partnerships. And so I get excited when you know this young old me find the old school cat like now playing to find uh, <laughs> to find an elected official that's basically s- saying alliances and partnerships work and then yeah. he shows you how and so now uh the uh, another list of one was the young leadership alliance like i mean you know as uh one of the viewers say how you know how you are just a supporter of the children in the community uh what and you have young children of your own uh, what, 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 you know, what pushed you or led you to create that alliance with between the, the youth and your community? I think having children of my own, which is why, yeah. um, I have a 17 year old, I have a 14 year old, a five year old and a one year old. Yeah. And I understand the importance of really, uh, investing in yeah. our youth. And so I said, well, if I can do this at home, then maybe I need to take this outside of my home because you never know what children may not have the same opportunity to have a father like me in their lives. And so I want to really invest in them and help them because they are our leaders of tomorrow. And so I started the Young Leadership Alliance uh, in December of last year, and they're ages 14 to 40. Uh, And we meet once a month. As a matter of fact, we just met yesterday uh, and we sit down and we have those conversations about what's going on in their lives. You know, what are some things that they're dealing with? How can I, as an elected official, help them navigate through any issues that they're having? And how can I speak uh, into their lives to encourage them and to strengthen them and to undergird them and uplift them? to be who they're called to be. Uh, And I wanna even begin to bring in guest speakers to talk about the different subject matters that we have so that we can address their concerns. I wanna even begin to expose them to government. I'm in the process of putting together a youth government uh, so that those in high school between the uh, ninth grade and 12th grade year, 
they get an opportunity to be exposed to what are we doing uh, as local leaders? Uh, you know, how are we positively impacting their lives, the decisions that we make, you know, exposing them to what our sheriff's office does, you know, and the deputies on the road, exposing them to what our fire safety does, you know, exposing them to what our economic development team, what they do, you know, exposing them to our planning, our zoning, uh, exposing them to all the different areas throughout our county and the services that we provide to our community, exposing them to that so that they can really see that we're not just sitting behind a desk. We really are working to make this a great place to live, work, and play. And so that's why I created it, because I really want to invest in them uh, so that they can start thinking about things from a different perspective uh, and another way of trying to get them uh, to not engage in things that can be non or counterproductive. Let's, yeah. let's engage in some productive things and some community service, community work. Love you it. know, one of the things I'm proud of about Gwinnett County is we have a program called Gwinnett County, uh, Gwinnett Citizen 101 Academy. And that initiative was started by a chairwoman when she was working in community outreach at the county. Now she's our chairwoman. But I went through that program and it was an amazing program. All of the things that you just spoke about was outlined and we got to visit each department. And I always I talk about this a lot. I think I went through 2015 or 2000, I think it was 15 or 16. I talk about this program a lot because I, the, one of the things that I can honestly say changed my perspective on law enforcement was going through that academy. And the reason I say that is because we have a simulation room at the county and I was able to go into the simulation room, which is about 10 feet tall. I'm only five feet three. So the, the, the room is about 10 feet tall and I had a gun in my hand and they was telling us like, you know, a lot of times people say things like, why didn't you shoot him in the leg? Well, you can't shoot somebody in the leg when they're coming for you. And honestly, when I pulled the trigger, I was shooting all over the place, missing the guy. By the time I got finished, I was dead. So I had a whole different, and then I got a chance to talk to some of the officers. And we know that not all of our officers are bad, but just to hear them say the right. words out of their mouths, this is why we, this is why we do what we do. This is how we have to walk up on a car. This is why we have to do it. A certain, it was crazy. I was like, and I talk about it to this day a lot because that changed my perspective on so many things, especially law enforcement. So I know that the youth between 14 and 40, they're going to find that that program invaluable as I did with here in Gwinnett County. And thank you to our commissioner, uh, Chairwoman Nicole, uh, Nicole Up Hendrickson, who started that program before she became our chairwoman. I'm going to have she's to. A, uh, she's a great chairwoman. You all have a amazing chairwoman. Yeah. We've had an opportunity to have conversations a couple times at some yeah. uh, local county commissioner events, and I'm so thoroughly impressed with her leadership, um, yeah. with her professionalism. Yeah. Um, and she's just a, you all are very very fortunate to have her. Yeah. Thank you. But I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to move to Newton County because because uh, I'm a youth all the <laughs> way up to forty. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, I get a I get a youth discount. <laughs> yes, come on, we give you a discount. <laughs> he said fourteen wanna, to forty. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I know you never hear that. You hear like I was talking to you someone know. recently about a program for young men. When I was in Jersey, we couldn't find my. I had a guy had a godson who was struggling. We could not find one program for a young man past the age of eighteen. He was nineteen, not one. Yeah. And we were trying to, he and he, his mom and I were trying to figure out, well, we need to get him some help. There was not one program. When they got 18, you're on, after 18, you're on your own. Yeah. So the fact that you have a program that goes from 14 to 40 is a great thing because there are some young men out there who are still struggling at 25. And, and they young, still need and, and 35. 35. 35, right? So you know, I, that, that is a, I, what made you decide to go so far out to 40? Well, because I, I know that we do have some of our millennials that still need some guidance, uh, that still need uh, someone to kind of walk them through steps to get yeah. where they desire to be. And like you said, that they are still struggling, even though they're out of high school. Some of them may even be out of college. But to really have a figure uh, in place to say, hey, you know, have you considered this? Have you tried that? Have you tried this? I know you may feel like things may not be working in your favor right now. I wanna give you a level of encouragement. I wanna give you a level of hope. And also I believe 
uh, that is part of my ministry as well, to really be able to speak into young men, speak into men, uh, and help them reach um, their highest potential. And so I didn't want to just stop at um, high schoolers or you know younger men, I, because I understand that there's a lot of us after high school and in college that are still struggling. Yeah. yeah, you know, and the thing about our generation, I feel like so. For the record, I am a millennial. Uh, so the you thing know about what you know. oh well, <laughs> you know, oddly enough, I I didn't consider I didn't know I was considered a millennial until I got into politics. You yeah. know, because I remember Y two K. You know, I, I you know I'm thinking a millennial, somebody born two thousand and beyond. I you know I I grew up in, I'm a nineties baby. I grew up in the nineties. I was born in the eighties, but I grew up in yeah. the nineties. So you know when they said millennial, I was like, oh okay, I'm thinking of my little my little siblings. But I can say that our generation, it, you know, is kind of like the I guess the 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 bridge or you know the bridge between. Uh, I guess I don't know what my mom did generation. I guess the the, the, the second, yeah, Gen Xers, and then the Gen Z because you know we remember some of the things that 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 my kids have no idea. You know, my kids don't probably know what a dial tone is. You they know, don't. a right? telephone. They don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah, you know, they don't know. You know, when we joke up, you know, when we joking about how slow the computer is, and we like this must be dial up or something, AOL. <laughs> and so, but going through that, you know, being in that 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 middle, uh, just I guess generation, I feel like it's a lot of you know. I don't know if we grew up too fast, but I feel like you know, at thirty five, thirty six, we're you know, I mean, we're still asking ourselves questions. You know, what if? Uh, you know, because a lot of things we do, uh, the older generation just can't seem to understand why we do it. <laughs> uh, like example, my my mom and my family, them, they, you know, they've been on the same job since 18 and retired and 55. And whereas, you know, I'm 35 years old. Well, I'm lying. I'm 36 years old. And uh, I probably don't have four or five jobs in my, <laughs> you know, in my career. So uh, and so I do appreciate a, a, a program that that if I would have got in at 14, I know that at, at 28, you know, 30, when we midlife crisis at 30, you know, now we're going into 40, you know, we still have that mentorship that most likely that that relationship started at 14. That's so right. now if I don't have a pops, I have a pops. That's right. You know, so that's, I commend you on that because, uh, I mean, that's, that's amazing. You know, I'm also a part of, um, I don't know if you all read, but I'm also a part of Newton Mentoring oh. Inc., Oh, okay. um, What's that? Our late Judge Horace Johnson, who passed uh, from COVID-19 back in 2020, um, had started a mentoring program. And so in 2019, I had talked to one of the other judges about starting a mentorship program here in Newton County because I didn't know of one. And so he reached out to me, said, hey, Commissioner, uh, I'm just calling you because I heard you want to start a mentoring program. And I said, yes, sir, I do. He said, well, don't. I said, why not? He said, well, I have one and I want you to be a part of it. Mm. I said, yes, sir. So he invited me to the Kiwanis Club. He was a part of the Kiwanis Club and they were doing a presentation over Newton Mentoring Inc. And so I went, I sat there, had lunch with them and I was so thoroughly impressed with the program that they already had in place that they're already working with the schools. You know, the mentors come in, they do a two hour training, they do a background check. Uh, and then once they do that and the background checks come back clean uh, and they go through the training, now they are actually partnered uh, with a mentee throughout the school system in Newton County. Mm -hmm. So when I saw that, I was like, wow, this is impressive. Well, we never got an opportunity to really sit down and talk about how I'm going to play a role in helping this organization go to the next level before he passed. Oh, so wow. once he passed, it was kind of challenging for me because he didn't tell me what to do. I didn't get any direction um, on how he wanted me to really play a role in his organization. So I remember him telling me to reach out to the program coordinator. So one day I sat down, I said, OK, I'm going to reach out to the program coordinator, reached out to her, had a meeting with her. She said, well, we do have a position 
uh, that's open on the board of directors. Would you be open to that? And I was like, sure. The board of directors, they voted me in to sit on the board of directors. And then I said, well, in addition to being on the board of directors to kind of help give guidance and direction to the organization, I'd love to be a mentor as well, because that's kind of one of where one of my passions are. Went through the uh, training, got my background check done. And um, she gave me one mentor. Then the next week she gave me another one. I mean, mentee. Then she, the next week she gave me another one. The next week I said, well, wait a minute. Am I supposed wait to have more than one mentee? <laughs> she said, yes, we have some people that have three or four. And I said, oh, because you meet with them once a week. And so, of course, the uh, two young men that I was originally assigned, they were troubled in school. One of them got kicked out of school after our very first session. The other one was actually at a second chance school. Uh, and he was on his way. He was doing a lot better on his way back into his regular uh, high school. So to be able to uh, meet with them and speak into their lives and invest in them has been great it's been phenomenal were they because i know i would have been were they uh ecstatic the fact that you were their mentor and like your position and you know black dude with power <laughs> <laughs> i don't think they initially quite understood um the position that i was in they just were they were kind of slightly hesitant initially yeah. because they're like well this guy's coming in having this conversation with me, you know, asking me about myself. And then he's telling me all about himself. You know, initially, they're generally kind of reserved. But the more conversations you have, they begin to open up. And then, you know, once they do realize the magnitude of what I do, they yeah. do kind of like, oh, wow. Yeah. Commissioner Mason is my mentor. Yeah. I was say, I bet that's, I mean, it I would be a while. at it. Yeah. I'll be going home telling, hey, man, hey. <laughs> see that guy on TV? Yeah, I get one-on-one -on -one with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know, right? <laughs> on TV, that's true. I got. Yeah. I want to ask you a quick question about, um, uh, some, um, I want to go back a little bit to economic development. There is a, there's a lot of um, price increases when it comes to commercial real estate right now. And there are a lot of business owners who would love to get into a commercial space, but it's just so expensive. Um, what do you, are you guys doing anything to help small businesses who want to go into a commercial space but just cannot afford to the rents that are being because they, they're out there off the chain right now. The rents are just off the chain. Are, is there any programs that you're working on right now that to help them move into these spaces where they they are able to, you know, go in there and get that foot traffic? Because a lot of times they don't. I, I did an event in 2019. No, 20. 2019, I think it was, or 2020, it was it was a, a small business Saturday. I'm working at home, so I know that a lot of times when they have small business Saturday, if you don't have a brick and mortar, nobody knows that you're out there in the community. Yeah. So I did, I had a I had a membership at the co-working space. I did the event, didn't think nothing about it. I did it the, the end of October for the end of November, and people called me like that morning, six o'clock, like, hey, I want to come. I'm like, I don't have, I didn't have any space left. But there were so many home businesses who wanted to have that face-to-face -face contact with potential customers who just could not afford brick and mortar. So in Newton County, are there real re, um, commercial real estate properties available? And what are the rents looking like? And, and is there any help for small businesses to, to move into those spots? Well, I can tell you that would be an excellent question for our chamber. Um, okay. Our chamber president, that is basically what they are in the community to do. They support all of our small businesses. Uh, they provide them with programs and assistance to kind of help them stay afloat. Uh, a couple of things that I've personally done. One, uh, all of the small business in my district, I highlight them via social media. Uh, and so I, you know, in my district two community forum page, in my commissioner page, what I do is all small business across my district, I highlight them, whether they are, uh, a home business, whether they are brick and mortar, doesn't matter what they are. I highlight them so that people know that these are individuals or business owners or entrepreneurs in our district. These are the services that they offer. Uh, and so that when people need to know, hey, well, I need my home pressure washed. Oh, I remember Commissioner Mason posted this post 
about this gentleman that's a, an amazing pressure washer here in District 2. Let me reach out to him. I need some things done around my house. Oh, Commissioner Mason posted this about uh, this disabled veteran that has this business uh, in District 2, and he does some of these things. He does plumbing. He does siding. He does uh, fencing. Let me reach out to him. So that's one of the things that I do. I highlight them to drive business to them. In addition to that, um, uh, what I also am about to start doing, and I'm starting, I'm going to start it this year, is I'm going to start doing business of the month. Uh, where I'm going to begin to highlight the district two businesses all across the county uh, or all across the district uh, and, you know, highlight them uh, in addition to that and make them business of the month so that people can start seeing uh, who they are and that they're out there and what they're doing. Uh, I can tell you one of the things that our economic development team has done, uh, and I was very excited about it. I did a retail and community summit uh, last mm -hmm. year online. Uh, I brought in a retail coach. I brought in an economic development team. I brought in our chamber president. I brought in different individuals from the county, like our transportation director, our planning and zoning director. I brought all of them in so that we can kind of figure out how do we effectively bring in retail and an industry commercial into our community um well one of the things that our economic development team has done is they have started a stop the commute campaign uh, because from that retail and community summit what we one of the things we took away was shop local if you mm -hmm. shop local then you're going to see those uh dollars being continually uh, generated uh, here within the county. They stay within the county. Well, what we found out is that people were driving to Fulton County, Henry County, uh, Gwinnett County, Rockdale County to go to work every single day. Mm. Well, over 34,000 individuals are commuting outside of Newton County every single day for jobs. Well, when they go to those other counties during lunchtime, they're spending their dollars in those counties versus here. Well, what we found out is that, like you talked about foot traffic, the way that a specific retailer decides that they want to come to our community is based off of the foot traffic. Well, we're losing our foot traffic to other counties. So now what we're doing is we're working with Georgia Piedmont Technical College. We're working with you know them from a workforce development perspective to have those same jobs with the same benefits, the same high wages as they're traveling for right here in Newton County. Mm -hmm. So that we can say, hey, you don't have to commute anymore. You can stay here. You can work here. And when you go to lunch, now those dollars are remaining within the county. So as we're doing that, we're now pushing more and more people to stay here in the county, work in the county, uh, put their dollars, tax dollars back into the county, reinvest them. Uh, and so those are some of the things that we're doing. Shop local campaign, uh, stop the commute campaign, business highlights once a month. Those are some of the things that we're doing to really help our small businesses. Uh, and I'm sure our chamber has programs as well to kind of help them uh, from a financial perspective or show them how to generate revenue or to stay afloat as well. We also utilize some of our American Rescue Act funds uh, that we got uh, from our US legislators to really reinvest back into uh, our 501c3s, our small businesses, uh, to kind of help them because I know some of them were uh, lost business over the pandemic because we weren't facing face as much people weren't coming in so that was another thing that we utilize as well to really help our small businesses also so did you see an increase uh with more and more people working from home did that help yes. the, the shop local yes increase it did uh as a matter of fact because we saw such a huge amount of people beginning to work from home we now are having to re or invest more into broadband yeah and mm -hmm. so in some of our rural parts of Newton County, it was hard for the students because they didn't yeah. really have, you know, great access to internet. They were going to other places like other businesses around the community that had Wi-Fi. 
uh, a lot of people working from home. So we really had to look at broadband as uh, expanding that. And so we've done that. Uh, we put about $500,000 into broadband. We're also looking at getting some of the uh, infrastructure bill monies that's going to be coming down uh, from our federal government uh, to actually help uh, expand it even further. So we're always finding ways uh, to expand that broadband because so many people are beginning to work from home. Man, let me tell you something. Derek, he want to move to Newton County for the 14 and 40. I'm moving there because of the whole economic development piece and no, i'm kidding yeah. i love i love in that county but yeah. but if i had to go somewhere it probably would be new county i just i love what you're doing the fact that you have taken Thank the time you. to shine the spotlight on small businesses because i know that's a big deal um the, the, the there's a there's a the ceo of rockdale not um oz nesbitt when i first yes. met Oz, he was going around the county he wasn't a ceo yet but and i think he might have been campaigning now that i think about it in a very smart way but he was going around the county he created a show just to shine a spotlight on small businesses and he just popped up in their location he had a microphone he had a camera guy and he put him on the spot and he shined his, and i thought that was i was like that is so amazing well fast forward to the day he's a ceo <laughs> so you That's know right. but he that is. was people that was people realizing that he cares about my business and here's my thing if someone has a brick and mortar, yeah, that's one person. But how many people walk through that door? And when you say, hey, vote for me, they can vouch for you to their customers. So I thought that when I look back, that was very ingenious. So kudos yeah. to you for that as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, uh, I mean, we can sit and talk all day. It's so much, uh, so much that we didn't get a chance to go get into. But if they visit your website, they can see all the list of the amazing uh, things that you have already done, as well as the uh, things that you would like to to either uh, continue to do or new ideas. Uh, could you provide them with your website so they can find you? Absolutely. Um, they can reach me at Demond Mason, the number four commissioner dot com. That's Demond Mason, the number four uh, commissioner dot com. Of course, they can also go to my social media platforms. I'm on Instagram. Uh, at the Demond Mason. I'm on Facebook at T Demond Mason Senior. I'm also on LinkedIn uh, at T Demond Mason Senior. Uh, and so I want to do my best to be everywhere I possibly can because I want to be one of those leaders that are is accessible, reachable. Uh, anytime my constituents or my residents reach out to me, they know I have a uh, a standard that I reach back out to them within 24 to 48 hours. Uh, no longer than 48 hours. If I do, uh, please follow me again. They know that. Uh, but normally I have a standard of 24 to 48 hours. So those are places where they can reach me. They can also call me at 470-322-5764. 470-322-5764. Uh, they can also go to the Newton County Board of Commissioners website. Uh, uh, at the Newton County Board of Commissioners website, you can click on, go into the Board of Commissioners you can click on my name. It gives you my bio. It gives you my contact phone number, my contact email address. They can reach out to me uh, and I'll be more than happy to help them in, in any way possible. My campaign address is demand Mason for commissioner at gmail.com. So that's demand Mason, the number four commissioner at gmail.com. They can also email me there if they have any questions about the campaign also. Listen, Ooh, trying to keep up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that's it, that's it, myself. We ask that question a lot. Nobody has ever given us that many. <laughs> yeah. said, I, I know he see us over here. We all. <laughs> <laughs> we are trying to like, make, wait a minute. I got to look. Listen, I want to thank you so much. Um, I look you forward to, to meeting you. Um, the work yes. that you're doing, man, I, I just know your community really is proud of what you're doing. Some of the programs and initiatives that you have mentioned are just amazing. And I just, Mm, I just if I if I could vote for you, I definitely would. And I say that publicly okay. right here while we streaming around 130 countries. I say that proudly. I would definitely you would definitely get my vote if I could. I, I live in Gwinnett. I can't. So don't I don't know. start thinking this is some fraud. Yeah. I'm, I'm no, just I saying it too. You know, if, <laughs> I could, if, if, it could. You know, if, if I could. can, I did want to mention two more that uh, are pressing and that are dear to me. Uh, Derek talked about where he initially met me. I started the Clean Up Newton project 
uh, for our district last year. And so every single month, uh, I get out there with my safety vest, my gloves, my bag, uh, and we pick up trash along the roadways every single month. Uh, we noticed that that was an issue. Uh, one of my residents brought it to my attention. I said, well, hey, I'll start the Clean Up Newton project. And we do that every single month. And we enjoy it. I love getting out there cleaning up because I feel like I'm doing my part. Um, in addition to the Clean Up Newton project, um, I also started the Unsheltered or Homeless Job and Housing Initiative. Uh, oh, and wow. so what I did with that program is I saw that our uh, unsheltered population was growing. Uh, and so I wanted to provide a solution to that. So I sat down uh, with our director of our homeless shelter, which is actually in the city of Covington, uh, not in the unincorporated Newton County area, which is where I govern, but it was in the city of Covington. I sat, uh, brought her to the table. I brought our vice chair of economic development, our vice president of economic development with Georgia Piedmont Technical College, brought him in, uh, brought in our director of the housing authority, brought her in and brought in our president of the chamber. And we all sat down at the table and I casted my vision uh, for our unsheltered population and said, I want to be able to take them, transport them to Georgia Piedmont Technical College where they can go through a five week or a 15 week training program. Once they graduate, they automatically are hired with one of the companies here in Newton County, making 16 to $28 an hour uh, and then working with our housing authority to actually find them affordable housing where we can get them reacclimated back into the community so that they can begin to feel good about themselves. I'm also about to now pull in Viewpoint Health because I understand that some of those that are unsheltered, they do have some mental health challenges or they may have some substance abuse challenges. And so we wanna address those concerns as well so that once right. they become successful, they don't revert back. We keep them on that track because we've addressed those root causes that got them to where they are. Right. So those are two of my babies as well. Oh, wow. Well, he Anybody did say he had a lot of kids. Enough. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he did say that. Like, and, I and I know we have to wrap up, but how did redistricting affect your, mm. you know, your district? Because a uh, perfect example, like here in Gwinnett, some people who voted, who just voted for a county commissioner in 2020 due to redistricting, now they have to vote for another county commissioner in 22, whereas the ones who did not vote in 2020, they don't get another chance to vote until 20. So it's been six years now. It's going to be six years for them to have to vote. So uh, was your district changed? Is anybody, you know, or any areas no longer in your district? Do you have new areas? Uh, just to let people know. Yes, we did have a change. But the beautiful thing is that I do my best to maintain a very positive relationship with our state delegation that uh, delegates over our, over Newton County. Uh, so I work with our, uh, our Georgia Senator. I work with our Georgia House of Representatives. I try to maintain a great relationship with them and have uh, continual conversations with them on consistent conversations to kind of let them know what's going on in Newton County. So when it came to redistricting, because I had already established a great relationship with them, uh, they really, I believe, um, they did us justice. They did us great. Um, our, I didn't realize this, but when I put our previous map uh, next to our new map, it looked like our previous map was basically gerrymandered. Well, I had no idea because I'm a, I'm, you know, being a first time elected official, I'm thinking that this is the way that it's supposed to be. This is the way it's supposed to look. But when you look at our new map, it looks together. It, all the districts looks like they're in cluster. Nobody was drawn out of their district. Every commissioner still sitting in their current district. I did lose uh, some of my district, but I was uh, on one side of my district, I lost some, but then there were others added uh, to the other side of my district. So uh, the beautiful thing is the majority of my district uh, still remained. Uh, there are some new individuals that now I've got to go back out, meet, uh, introduce myself. I have the smallest district geographically wise, but I have the largest population. Uh, in my district, we have 22,752 residents. Whereas in other districts, they may have 22.5 or 22.4. Uh, 
and I have 22.7. I also have the highest Hispanic population, which is 9% in my district as well. And so I'm strategically working now, having those discussions on how do I reach uh, the Hispanic population because I have the largest in the entire county. Is there now, a website someone can go to see if you know if they district change and make sure that you're still a commissioner or get excited if you know you are a new commissioner? Yes, they can always go to the Newton County uh, Board of Commissioners website. So if they go to uh, our website at Newton County um, mm -hmm. Board of Commissioners website, they'll um, they should see the map there. I believe we placed the new map um, on the website. They can also contact the Newton County Board of Elections. Uh, the Board of Elections will have that new map as well. So those okay. two places they should be able to find it. All right. All I right, think that's it. Know. I think, yeah, we. <laughs> <sighs> this was a good one. We, you're right. We could have talked about this all day, but we won't. We won't keep you with this Sunday. It's supposed to be family time for all of us, but this was a really good one. Um, thank it's you. Campaign so day for me, so I'm going to that, hit okay, those. Well, listen, as as do some justice. The show is streamed mm -hmm. on Radio One, um, Facebook twice, LinkedIn once, YouTube, Twitter, and Roku. So hopefully, it did you some justice. So thank you again for I taking the so time too. out to to spend some time with us and share your vision and your passions and your purpose and your missions and all of the great things that you're doing in Newton County. They are definitely um, lucky to have you um, as their commissioner in District 2. Thank so you. thank you so much. Yes. All right, listen, y'all, this is it. I know we can stay, but we won't. We'll be back again next Sunday, same bad place, same bad time with another great guest telling you how they're working it out in your community. So thank you again, Commissioner uh, Mesa, for joining us. Derek J. Wilson, thank you for calling with me. Listen, y'all stay safe out there. Corona's still floating around. I ain't trying to scare nobody. I'm just saying, stay safe. <laughs> and until next time, my friends, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Popcorn in Politics. What's the real deal? Hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney and Derek J. Wilson. Be sure to subscribe to the show and share it with your family and friends. To support the show, visit us on the web at www.popcornandpolitics.com. Connect with us on Facebook at Progressive Popcorn and on Instagram at Popcorn Politics Podcast. 